Hello everyone, it's Nina and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be starting a new reading vlog and this one is going to be entirely focused on doing something a little bit outside of my comfort zone and I am going to be reading thrillers for an entire week. Actually knowing my usual schedule for filming, it'll probably be a little bit longer than a week but for right now I'm going to try and do my best to get all the books in this video read within a week time frame. All the books I'm going to be reading in this video are ones I talked about in my recent fall TBR video which I will link somewhere up above and two of these books are also ones that I have really wanted to read to get off of my physical TBR. So let's go through and talk about the TBR for this video right now. The first book that I am definitely planning on reading for this video is His and Hers by Alice Feeney. This is a domestic thriller about an ex-married couple who have to come together when their jobs are both involved with the murder of a young woman. However, both of them have secrets and connections to this young woman that they kept from each other during their time being married that are now coming to light. Like I said in that TBR video, I don't know how much like fall time atmosphere or vibes this book necessarily has. Although the cover is definitely giving a little bit of fall with this like black on brown background with these dead trees. But thrillers in general are just something I like to read in the fall time. I think as things outside get more like dead and dreary as we move into winter, thrillers just seem like a natural fit for them. This will be my third Alice Feeney book that I've read. The only other thrillers that I have read are ones from her. I have read Daisy Darker as well as Rock, Paper, Scissors. Daisy Darker I gave three and a half stars and Rock, Paper, Scissors I gave four stars. Even if her books are a little bit crazy and her writing style isn't the best all the time, I still think that they are very entertaining and very fast paced, which is all things that I want from a thriller. The other two books are a little bit more up in the air on if I'm able to finish them for this vlog. One of the books I have is The Lamplighters by Emma Stonix or Emma Stonks. Not sure how to pronounce her last name. But this is a more slow, like kind of literary thriller that focuses on the disappearance of three lighthouse keepers and the story is told from the perspective of the women in their lives. This book is also, I believe, slightly inspired by the Flannan Isles lighthouse disappearances, which is a famous unsolved case involving the disappearance of three lighthouse keepers. And just as a fun like personal fact about me, I really love lighthouses. They're definitely one of my special interests. And honestly, if I was a woman in the 1800s, I would want to live on a lighthouse. So this is a book I've had on my radar for a while that I'm hoping to read in this video. And the last book I have tentatively for my TBR is The Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is the start of the Hannibal series, which is obviously the inspiration of the movies like Mindhunter and Silence of the Lambs. And more importantly, it is the basis for the TV show Hannibal which I'm a huge fan of. This is also the only one of the Hannibal books that focuses on his relationship with the FBI and special investigator, Will Graham. And the relationship between those two characters is the basis of the TV show Hannibal. And since I love the TV show Hannibal so much, I figured it was only a matter of time before I would want to read the original source material that the characters are based on. I do know this book probably won't age very well. I think it was written in the 80s and obviously there's a lot of elements in this book that were modernized quite a bit for the TV show adaptation. However, I'm still willing to take a chance and hopefully find this book enjoyable if I can get past some of those more gross homophobic or like triggering elements. But this one is definitely the lowest one on my priority for those reasons and also for the fact that I don't own a physical copy of it. And I do really want to read through some of the physical books on my TBR. So in terms of what we're going to be focusing on, I'm going to start off with His and Hers. I am going to be dual reading this both as a physical book as well as listening to the audiobook from Hoopla, which tangentially related to Hannibal, the male narrator for this book is the actor Richard Armitage, who plays the titular Red Dragon in the Hannibal TV show. And I think he's done quite a few audiobook narrations, always playing like the husband or like male character in Alice Feeney's books, which I think is just like a cute touch. And I've wanted to see what he's like as a audiobook narrator for a while. So I'm definitely going to be listening to the audiobook for this. So this is my rough TBR for this video. I'm going to get started reading some of his and hers and I'll come back to you in the next couple days when I have my first update. So it is currently Wednesday. I thought I would have an update a little bit before now, but I just haven't had time to film. Currently, I am a third of the way through His and Hers by Alice Feeney. So I thought I would start off giving you an update with this. I think I gave a rough summary of what this book is about. And honestly, the plot has not expanded too much from that. We are basically following alternating chapters between the two narrators who are named Anna and Jack. It's revealed, I think, around like 10% of the way through. And this was also something I knew going into the book that Anna and Jack are ex-husband and wife. And slowly over the course of the story, we started to learn more about what led to their divorce and their like really bad falling out. 
But both of them are sort of like pulled together again when there is a murder of a woman in a small town where they're both from. Anna is a news reporter and Jack is a like police officer slash like police detective. And in classic like domestic thriller fashion, there's a lot of secrets they both have been keeping that connect them to this recent murder. Like I said, I'm around a third of the way through. The chapters don't have numbers. It just alternates either being his or hers, but I currently am on page 97. So far, I am enjoying this. Like I said, I think before, this is my third Alice Feeney book. And I think currently I place it probably between Daisy Darker and Rock, Paper, Scissors. I think it's better than Daisy Darker, but I don't know if it's as like fast paced or as addictive as Rock, Paper, Scissors is. It definitely actually has been quite a slow start, just like learning more about the two characters and their background. Actually more so focusing on Anna's background and her relationship with her mother and kind of everything that led her to leave the small town they're from. I've been mostly listening to this as an audiobook, as I mentioned before. And one thing I actually really like is there are some chapters sprinkled in that are from the killer's perspective. And they use kind of like a voice changer effect on that narrator. And they also are alternating between both the male and female narrators so that you kind of don't know who the killer is supposed to be and make their identity more ambiguous, which I think is really fun. I would assume from like the structure of this book that it would end up being that one of either the husband or the wife is going to be the killer. But if it's going to be a third party, I do have an idea of possibly who that person could be. But overall, I am enjoying this. I'm going to continue listening to more of the audiobook and reading it over the next couple days. So that is my update for this so far. Also, I do have a tiny, tiny update for the second book I started, and it actually ended up being Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. Last night, I just kind of wanted to see if I could maybe get a sample of this as a ebook through Apple Books. And I did that and just read like the first two chapters. I wasn't anticipating to like this very much, but already with just those two chapters, I'm like, oh yeah, we are so back and so into this story because reading it is just like making me get pulled back into my time watching Hannibal. And obviously I have that adaptation to kind of imagine all of the characters and like what the scenes and stuff look like. But seeing it written out again is just really fun and just like a new fun way to like immerse myself in these characters and this plot. And it's just really interesting to see the original source material that those characters were expanded on because in the book adaptation, Will Graham has only captured two like psychopath serial killers. Whereas in the TV show, he's dealing with serial killers left and right. So it's really different to see him and like everything he went through in the book versus the TV show. And just with the two chapters I read so far, we haven't yet been introduced to Hannibal, but I'm just super excited to see what their relationship was like in the original book. So yeah, those are my reading updates for right now. My camera battery is about to die, so I'm going to end it off here. And I'll hopefully come back to talk to you in the next couple days when I have another update. a couple days now so I thought I would give you another reading update. I'm going to talk very very briefly about his and hers because I've only made like a little bit more progress from when I last talked to you. I actually haven't read this in the last couple days but as you saw in the clip directly before this I did do some reading of this this morning. I'm currently on page 127 which is I think chapter 27 and in the last like 10% since I last talked to you guys it's been pretty much more of the same definitely quite slow moving. I do think we've gotten just in these last couple chapters more of an insight into Jack's life, whereas the previous section of the book was definitely more focused on Anna's backstory. And I think we're moving in a direction to start having some more big reveals happening relatively soon, as more like kind of creepy, weird things have been happening to the main characters. So that is my update for reading this. But actually the majority of what I've been doing the last like three days has been reading a ton of Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. When I last talked to you guys, I read just the first two chapters as like an ebook sample. But since then, I actually got the audiobook from Hoopla. And I'm pretty sure I'm around like 80% of the way through this. For the first half, I was obsessed. It was so good. I really loved the back and forth of Will and Hannibal. I also really like audiobooks that have a lot of dialogue. And this definitely does have that. I also thought it was really interesting that there's like such a big emphasis on the like forensic study and all of the like minutia of how they're actually processing the evidence. 
like pretty much all of the FBI team will go up and do like a little speech on how they handled the particular evidence they were given. And I think at least for me, kind of being new to this like thriller crime genre, that stuff was very fresh and interesting. I also have been noticing just how many lines are ripped from the book and put into the TV show adaptation that I didn't actually were know from the book originally. One of my favorite lines that's actually from the book is the have you ever seen blood in the moonlight, which is something that Hannibal says to Will, which is very, very important for like the finale of the entire series and really pivotal for their relationship. Going into this book, like I said before, I was pretty apprehensive on if I would like it. I was anticipating a lot more strongly like homophobic elements, but it's actually not been as bad and more so just kind of like making me laugh in the absurdity versus making me angry. But overall, definitely not as bad as I thought it would be in that department. However, there was something I kind of knew going into it that would be more disturbing and triggering. And I feel like for the first like half of the book, I was like, oh, we're having fun. It's giving like the energy I really want. And then we got to the section on Dee's background and it was so disgusting and painful and sad. I f this is definitely what I was worried about having to read but it was just like so gut churningly disgusting the abuse that he went through as a kid so yes incredibly triggering if you have like even remote sensitivity to child abuse this is definitely not the book for you and i was talking to my friends about this the fact that this part of the book is only vaguely hinted at in the tv show adaptation and the fact that the hannibal tv show was like yeah you can watch a guy cut his own face off but there's absolutely no way they're showing any like sexual or child abuse on screen Dee is a really interesting character. I feel like I am getting so much more of his personality come through here than in the TV show. Or at the very least, there's a lot that's very different from the portrayal of him in the book versus the TV show adaptation. And there's definitely an added element in the book that I'm really enjoying. The scenes with Hannibal and Will are very minimal compared to the TV show. So I think if you're going into this book expecting the full Hanagram angle, you're definitely going to be a little bit disappointed. However, I do still think it is there in the scenes we get of them together. And also just like seeing all of the other side characters that I love in the TV show adaptation in their original forms is really fun. So yeah, that is my feelings on this book so far. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this before the end of the vlog because I do want to finish this in the next like two days before the weekend's over. And I usually spend my weekends just reading physical books instead of listening to audiobooks. But if I have any time, I might end up squeezing some more of this in since I am so close to being done with it. I think my main priority for the rest of the day is to read as much as I can of his and hers. And I will come back to you tomorrow when I have my next update. Okay, so it's been like around a week since I last talked to you. It was not my intention. I was actually going to film this like final portion of the video on Monday night. But then I just ended up being too busy and then pretty much every other night this week I had something to do. So we're doing it now. But between the last time I talked to you and Monday, I actually had finished both of the books I read for this vlog. So I thought I would give you my final thoughts and overall reviews for these books. Let's start off by talking about His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I am going to give this book three stars. In the end, I definitely was a little bit more intrigued with where the story was going to go. But in terms of like the ending and like kind of like the final reveal for the killer, I felt like it was a little bit of a letdown and also was both a little bit expected, but also out of left field. I kept on thinking that there was going to be something else deeper to the reasoning for this character doing what they did. And it just didn't really feel that well put together, especially considering some of like the other motives of the characters that we have in the story. I think in addition to the twist, the other thing I didn't really like about this was it felt like it actually wasn't really what I had gone into the book expecting to have, considering what the synopsis is like. Part of like the tagline for the book is, there's two sides to every story, yours and mine, ours and theirs, his and hers, which means someone is always lying. And I really felt like the back and forth aspect of Anna and Jack, it feels like the book is much more going to be set up so that Anna and Jack are kind of like playing off each other and to make the reader constantly guess which person we're supposed to be on the side of. But in the end, it really felt like that was not really essential for this book, which kind of makes you wonder why the book is structured in the way it is. If we're not going to have any sort of like questioning or like climactic scene between the two of them. It felt like also that Anna had a lot more secrets than Jack. 
And it felt like the thing that happened between the two of them was not actually that central to the ending plot reveals, which I feel like is kind of a disservice to how this book was pitched. I don't know if that's more of the fault of maybe like the publisher in like developing the title and like the summary of the book and not actually having it be true to like the content of the book itself. But then there was also like the structural elements of the book of us having alternating perspectives between the two main characters. And for the beginning of the book, at least a little bit, it does make it seem like we're hinting at the fact that one of them could be the main killer. But I think that kind of like falls away by like the middle section of the book as we start to focus more on the characters' backstories. But again, it didn't really feel like that much related to their relationship was really central in like the big conflict of the story which is something that I kind of wasn't expecting. So yeah, for all of those reasons, I just didn't like this book as much as I have the other Alice Feeney books I've read. I think the twist in Daisy Darker is more interesting as much as it is very out there and I don't really like the characters in that book. Pretty much everyone in that book is like a huge asshole. But I do think Rock, Paper, Scissors is better in creating that dynamic where there is a very unreliable narrator for both of the parties that we're following in that story. And I also feel like the like multiple twists in that one and the overall setting is a little bit better of a book compared to this one. So I think I'm probably going to get rid of this book even as much as I have like grown to love the cover. I think the design is really nice of this. Actually, speaking of cover designs, I really, really like the UK cover for this. I don't know if I love like the typography and like the coloring, but I think the like bracelet that's used for the ampersand is a really, really nice touch because it is relevant to the plot of the story. I can't really foresee myself rereading this one, so I probably will pass it on. Although in the future, if I do find a copy of Rock, Paper, Scissors while I'm thrifting, I might end up buying that one. I originally had gotten a like Book of the Month hardback version, but it was just kind of too big and unruly and I prefer like a paperback in general. So if I see it again as a paperback, I might pick it up because that actually is a thriller that I think could be reread to kind of like pick up on all of the nuances in it. Whereas this one, I don't really feel like I'd want to read it again, nor can I see my wife or like anyone else in my life really enjoying it. Okay, so now let's talk about the other book I read, which was Red Dragon. This book, I'm going to give four stars. I really, really enjoyed this book, not just from like the connections that I have with loving the Hannibal TV show. I think I mentioned before how much I loved like the more like detailed elements of the like forensic investigation. And I also felt like I got a different perspective on Dee's character compared to how he's portrayed in the TV show that I really, really loved. And I just like felt so terrible with like all of the trauma that he had went through. I did think the ending was maybe a little bit abrupt, although it did make sense for the overall story. At the same time though, it is a little bit surprising that Thomas Harris decided to switch main characters after this. And I know for the rest of the Hannibal Lecter series, we're following Clarice instead of Will Graham. Whereas it felt like with the ending of this book, Will Graham could have easily continued on to be our main character. He really just became like so damaged and had lost basically everything that was holding him back from working with the FBI. So it's kind of surprising that he isn't like the focus of more FBI investigations in future books. But overall, I really did like this book. There were definitely some things I went going into this book thinking were going to be pretty like dated and very like problematic. And it actually ended up being some like new elements that I only vaguely knew were going to be part of the story that were particularly triggering and like disgusting to read. But overall, I really enjoyed this. It honestly made me kind of excited to rewatch Hannibal. I feel like I kind of need to go through now and rewatch the entirety of the Red Dragon arc. Now they have the background of the original source material to go off of. But overall, I had a lot of fun reading these two books for this video. Thrillers aren't usually part of my regular like repertoire in terms of genres I usually read from. So it was definitely fun to kind of like take advantage of the spooky season and push myself outside my comfort zone in reading these books. And that is going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting, or subscribing if you aren't already. Consider following me on the Storygraph if you'd like to see my reading updates in real time, as well as follow me on my bookstagram, which is of course linked in the description. And I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!